Hello, Floss Tube, and welcome. I figured since I was off work this week for spring break, I better get my weekly update in since today's the last day, well, business day, working day of my vacation. I still have the weekend to go. So I better make my update video before I go back to work. Hopefully I can get back on a regular schedule. Now that it's spring, it's beautiful outside. It's in the upper 50s, low 60s today, I think. The apricot tree is in complete bloom and I did not prune it yet. So I may have to just prune the stuff that's hanging over the neighbor's fence and maybe leave it for this year. The apple trees are getting ready to bloom, not blooming yet. The apricot tree is usually the first to bloom. So just early, early spring. Crocuses are up. Um, tulips and daffodils are getting ready. To, the green part is up, but not the flower stalk yet. So beautiful, beautiful spring. I uh, do have curly hair. This is what it looks like if I just let it go curly. Um, almost my whole, my husband and all of my children have curly hair to some degree. As you know, bossy daughter, Marie, got most of the curl. Hers is very, very curly. I don't often do it curly because it takes almost as long than to do it straight. And if you do it straight, you can just touch it up for a couple of more days. But if you do it curly, you kind of have to start over every morning. So figured I was off this week. I didn't want to stress too much about my hair today. So I just thought I'd let it be curly. Uh, I wanted to thank you to everyone who comments. Thank you. Just make my day. Thank you so much. You're all so kind. You just say the nicest things. And I wanted to um, give a shout out to Mary Jo and Colette. I hope you're recovering well and feeling better and healing. I hope that's going well. Okay, now a little bit of housekeeping. Daylene on So Grateful calls it housekeeping. I love that. Just a couple things. I had a viewer, after I showed my magnets a couple of videos ago, talked about how I always magnet the pattern to the, I had a viewer comment that it made a mark on hers, stitching for the very first time, and she'd used magnets for a long time and never had that happen. I've used magnets for, gosh, I don't know, 20 years, and I've never had it make a mark, so I don't know... She asked if I would ask my viewers, maybe if you have any idea what causes it to make, if it's a certain kind of magnet. I wondered if it was pulling the ink off of the pattern. Like if you leave the magnet there and just pull the pattern out, is it pulling ink off of certain kind of printer ink or something? I do like the rare earth magnets better. I think they, I like the way they, especially if I've got a, a pattern, fold it up several times so I can see the part I need to see. It needs to be strong and go all the way through that couple. So I love these silver ones, silver kind of a magnet. Um, I don't like these black ones as well. They don't hold as well, I don't think. Um, but I have, do you comment below? Have you had a problem with the black ones making a mark but not the silver ones? Does anyone know why it makes a mark every once in a while? And doesn't for you. I mean, I've never had it happen. And the viewer, I'm sorry, I was going to look up your name and then I ran out of time and forgot to look it up. She said she'd not had it happen for years and years and then all of a sudden it did. So if you have any idea, is it maybe the, is there sizing or something on certain pieces of fabric that is pulling the ink off of the magnet where it wouldn't, I, just, I don't know. If you have an idea, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> um, I, one of the suggestions, she's asked if I had any suggestions and I thought, well, what if you used, you could use a magnet that you only, it was a designated magnet to hold patterns and you only ever put it down on top of the paper pattern when you were on the top of your sewing, you only ever used that magnet on paper and you never actually put it down on the fabric. You just knew that that particular magnet only went on top of paper. And then when you were done, you carefully took it off and you never actually put it on your fabric. Because that's the only thing I can think of is that it's pulling the ink, picking up the ink somehow off of a pattern. I don't know. Let me know if you have any ideas. Comment below. Um, I said in my last video when I was showing, well, two videos ago when I was showing my um, 
my stitching station and how it works and showing you my lap stand and everything. You know how you get on camera and you say things and later you're just like, you, you're so flustered. You don't even know what you're saying. I said that I stitched every day since I was 16. Obviously, I have not stitched every day since I was six. I went back and watched the video and just went, oh my word, what in the heck? So I have stitched continuously since I was 16. Um, I have rarely gone longer than a week without stitching in my life. I just really love to stitch. I do get involved in other hobbies over the years, um, but rarely go longer than a week without stitching. I'd say there's maybe two or three times in my life where I went a couple months without stitching because I was just not, was back when I was a one at a time stitcher and I wasn't happy with what I was stitching and I couldn't, you know, it was back in the 90s before the internet and I just hadn't found any patterns that I liked and I, so maybe a couple months. And then once the internet took off in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, and I found the plethora of patterns out there and found stuff that I loved again and more designers were able to show their stuff without having to have a publisher or a distributor it just man ever since then I just can't I see patterns I love all the time that is not a problem anymore so anyway just wanted to explain that no I I can't even go 30 days and actually get stitching in every single day I almost miss I always usually miss one or there life just happens life happens all right, um, one of the things I wanted, I forgot to say about my lap stand was that the reason I love it up here is because my neck does not have to bend down so far. When I have it just resting against me, the cue snaps, my neck has to bend a lot further. I like it to be about this distance from my face. I really like it right there. It helps my neck, um, my shoulder. I didn't realize I was having problems with my shoulder and my wrist until after I started using the stand all the time and then realized, oh, my shoulder and my wrist feel better. I wonder if that had something to do with the way I was bending it underneath and you kind of have to use this arm to hold the weight of the, I don't know. Anyway, I forgot to say that. And the other thing I really forgot to show was how easy it is to flip over. The first floor stand I ever had in 1991, was before Marie was born I got a very inexpensive floor stand I was so excited about it but it the clamp didn't hold very tightly and to you had to kind of flip it this way to get to no you had to lift it up so it's it's clamped right here and you had to lift it up to get to the back and then pull it back down and every time I did that it fell out of the clamp I was just oh annoying so I never used it so when I first saw stitchers using this, when I found some a group of stitchers in Salt Lake City around 2004 or 5, and saw other people, that was my using the stand. That was my very first question. I'm like, how do you get to the back? How hard is it to get to the back? So, and I forgot to show that on my video. I'm so sorry. So you just, this knob right here tightens and loosens this part right here. So you tighten it up so it stays where you're stitching. But then as soon as you want to flip it over to end a thread or flip to the back because you need to start a thread or whatever you're flipping to the back for. You just you just loosen it just a bit, just like that, and then it flips right over. And then I stitch, and then I flip it right back over, and then tighten it back up. That easy. I love it. It just flips so easy. And then I flip it back where I want it, tighten it up. You know, I'm, as I'm tightening, sometimes I'm also adjusting to get it back where I want. Very easy motion. So sorry, I forgot to show that in the other video. Um, I am going to StitchCon. They posted on the StitchCon website, even if you're not going to StitchCon, you can go to the StitchCon website, which is Stitch. Can't remember if it's SpaceCon, all one word, dash con, dot com. You'll find it. Just Google StitchCon. It's a retreat at the end of June put on by Pam and Steph and and the keepsakes, it's put on by the keepsake store that is near Pam and Steph and they're highly involved, a retreat at the end of June in Cincinnati. They posted on their website a list of all of the floss tubers who are coming and a link to their floss tube channel. So even if you're not going to StitchCon, you can go to their website and if you're looking for some new floss tubers, there's a list right there. I am going. Um, Someone asked if my daughter, Catherine, boss daughter, was going as well, and she is not, only because I put my name on the waiting list last June 
didn't even know if Catherine was interested in going. I didn't think I would ever get up to the top of the waiting list. And then I did get up to the top of the waiting list. And now I'm going. I don't know. Catherine, if you're interested in going a year from June, maybe you should go put your name on the wait list right now. I can't remember if the wait list is open right now or if they have closed it, but I'm sure it will open up again. So anyway, yes, I am going to StitchCon. I will be there for about 12 days because I'm going the weekend before because I wanted to get together with some stitchers who live, as we in Utah call, back east. And I rarely, rarely get back east. So I figured, well, if I'm going all the way to Ohio, I might as well see if I can get together with a couple other people I know out there and stitch. So I will be there for a little over a week. I'm so excited. And Colette, Highway Stitcher, go watch her video if you haven't watched hers yet. She's an awesome new floss tuber and a friend of mine. She is also going to StitchCon. So I'm happy that I will have a friend there because that's a little stressful to go somewhere where you don't know anybody. <laughs> like in person. I know a lot of you through floss tube, but not in person. Okay. Um... Oh, and the video that Catherine and I did together last week, I talked about mystic, my mystic stitch pattern that when I opened it up, the cover was not the pattern that was on the inside. And so I had a several viewers um, go check on that for me and they show, gave me a link to what the pattern, what the pic, a picture of what the actual pattern that I have on the inside, Autumn Splendor, I think looks like and it's gorgeous so I'm glad I have that pattern. Let me know that Mystic Stitch is still in business. They're still selling patterns. They have lots of fabulous stuff. They're very similar to Heaven and Earth Designs where it's full coverage um, and that they also have the pattern that is the cover picture, the one I wanted, is still available. So thank you so much. I am going to go order that pattern so I have that one as well because you know I'm, I'm going to get to that like next week, right? Uh, no, <laughs> but for some reason I want it in my stash. Aren't we always like that? All right, on to whips. Um, Shores of Hawkwind Hollow. Oh, this is my basket. I showed it to you once before. It sits on the floor next to my stitching chair. All of my current whips sit in here. And then when the grandchildren come over, usually on the weekends, I can throw everything in here. I usually take everything off of this table, all the scissors and the just all the stitching stuff comes off of this table. I throw it in the top of this basket and I put it downstairs in my sewing room and close the door because I have two two-year-old grandchildren. Anyway, all right. And I didn't clean up my stitching area for this video today, so now you get to see what it really looks like. Shores, I am not going to take it off the key snaps because it is so close to it. Well, It'll be done by the end of the month. It's close to being completely done. I'm on the last block. So I'll save that for the end when it's done. But here is where I am so far. It's, it's the second to last block. If you were going across in rows, that would be block number 11. But for me, oh, and it's gonna, we're gonna have sunshine behind us, aren't we? But for me, it's my very last block. It's a whale and some other um, sea creatures under the sea. So that's been a fun one. But that whale is huge and it is just one big solid color. And then I have to fill in a couple of other sea creatures and then it's all complete full coverage fill in of the watercolor. And then like the water comes clear up to here. And then there's a couple things up here in the sky that's not full coverage. But this is, this is gonna be one of those takes a lot of hours blocks so I have been doing at least in I have actually have my little kitchen timer out I need to order a new one I ordered it for cross stitch it's s-a-l-t-e-r salter brand I love it because it has four timers across the top you can have four timers going at once you can set it for 30 minutes and then start it as a countdown or you can just push the button and have it count up and I, after um, having it for cross stitch for like a few months, I realized I needed it in the kitchen to cook and I stole it and it's been in the kitchen ever since. And now it's kind of melted on one side and just food on it and it's just gross. I need to order another one for stitching so I can have a clean one next to my chair. Anyway, I pulled it out so I could 
make sure that I put in an actual hour on this every day because I usually just do it by look at the clock or I'll put in a thread so we're, oh, I'm done with this moving on because I do work on it every day but I knew that that full coverage was going to take a while and I definitely wanted it done by the end of the month so I've been doing an actual hour on it every day so far on the days that I stitch you know there's going to be a couple days in here that I hopefully not but it usually happens I should make a pile so I know which ones I already did um, Victorian charm I won't show that to you because I showed it to you last time and it hasn't changed since I um, did a challenge with my sister-in-law Juliana for 30 days in for the month of March 31 days January February March yes 31 days where we challenged each other to work on a particular piece. I chose Victorian Charm for at least 30 minutes every day. And I only missed two days in March, I think, of not stitching where I didn't get any stitching done because that was the first thing I did every time. Well, okay, no, I did shores first and then I did this every time I sat down to stitch. And I'd set the timer or just look at my watch and make sure I got at least 30 minutes in. I did, some days I got more, but I always did at least 30. And I showed you that last time. For April, I enjoyed the challenge so much that I um, asked Juliana if we could keep going and she said yes, yeah, she's going to keep working on her same piece. She is working on, oh, I think it's called Christmas Magic. It was on the front of uh, Treasures magazine. Is it Needlework Treasures? They're thick magazines from the 90s. Gosh, I should have pulled that out. It's beautiful. It's a little it's a little boy and a little girl. I think they're standing on a bed looking out the window at um can't remember if you can see Santa Claus in his sleigh or if you can just see the swirl in the sky of where he just was. But it is a gorgeous gorgeous piece. That's what she's working on. I decided to switch to Twisted Band Sampler for my challenge piece because when I realized that Victorian charm is not going to get done by May 1st before I start mania it was one of my new starts last year for Mania, so it's just going to have to stay on the Mania list. And the other one I was really hoping to get done that was left from last year's Mania was Twisted Band Sampler. Let me pull it out. So I switched to this one for my challenge piece for May, hoping I could maybe get it done. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> After working on it for thinking, realizing that I really, really wanted it to get done before May 1st, and I only have a month left. I, I actually, that's why I pulled the timer out. I was for that in Hawker and Hollow. I was actually going to set it for an hour and actually work on it for an hour. Oh, this is going to be, this is going to need something. Something, something behind it. Let's see if that helps. So here's where I am so far. I did make it to the green. I'm so happy to be done with that gold. Oh my goodness. That gold was my least favorite color in this whole piece. So I am down to the, started on the greens. And what I realized after timing, okay, first thing, Catherine, pay attention, boss daughter. Why did this, why didn't you warn me about this before I started it? You should have realized this. Your brain is younger. You know how I hate borders because they're repetitive. I love it when you start it and it's gorgeous and it's going to be pretty. But after, you know, days and days of that border, I'm just done because I have really hard time stitching the same thing over and over again. This is just stripes of a border, you, <laughs> which would be fine if you could finish each stripe in, you know, a day or two and move on to something else. And I couldn't figure out why this piece was just taking so long. It just felt like it was moving slow as molasses. Well, now I know this, that green, just the green strip. I have worked on it for an hour. Okay, I finished the gold on April 1st. Finished the very end of the gold on April 1st down here and just barely started the green. Probably had this much of the green in on April 1st. I've worked on it for an hour on April 2nd, an hour on April 3rd, an hour on April 4th. I have not worked on it yet today. So that's second, third, and fourth, three and a half hours is how long that green strip has taken so far. So each stripe, depending on what specialty stitch it is, this is just the straight cross stitch part. It's got a, there's always a specialty stripe and then a straight cross stitch stripe. That's two colors together. 
just the crate strap straight cross stitch stripes are going to take five to six hours each for the half of the color. And then the other half of the color is going to take five or six hours longer. No wonder it's taking so long. So no, this is not going to be done by May 1st, but I will keep working on it because as soon as I'm done with the greens and start the three colors of green and then start on the blue, that's where we hit the bottom corner of the piece and then the stripes will start getting shorter again like they did up here. So my only hope is maybe I can get to the blues by the end of the month. <laughs> maybe I can get some other extra hours in at other places, but oh, it's like, it's a really good piece to do an hour a day because it's like eating my vegetables. I'm just like, okay, I'll put an hour in on that piece, but no more because it is just, oh, I just hate repetitive over and over and over again. Okay, the other funny thing about this piece is as I was looking at it, I was taking a picture of it yesterday, and, you know, staring at it like you do when you're getting ready to put it away. I realized that I made a mistake. Okay, see this leaf just has one open, a trail of one open stitch. Well, this leaf has an extra hole in there that didn't get filled in, right there. There's an extra, there's a stitch missing right here. Well, as I stitch down, I don't, once I have the pattern in for a couple of repeats, I don't look at the paper anymore. I just look up here to where this leaf was before and stitch it over here because that's faster. It's closer and it, I just keep repeating what I can see back here on here. So I'm not looking at the pattern anymore. So this leaf is missing a stitch. This leaf is missing a stitch. This leaf is missing a stitch. And this one is missing a stitch. And I finally, and this one, and the last one, because I didn't realize it until I was done stitching for the day. So that just made me laugh. I'm gonna have to go back and fix those <laughs> now that I can see them. And I know exactly why it happened because I was just looking back and repeating what I'd done on the repeat before. You'd think you'd be able to see that as you're working on it, but no. No, and I did put this on bigger stretcher bars because um, that it was just not quite wide enough for 11 by 11s and it wasn't long enough. Just It just needed to be an inch bigger both ways to be able to do a whole stripe without having to move the Q-snaps. So I finally just got out my bigger, I probably added, these are 14 by 14 Q-snaps I think which is a little awkward to work with on my lap stand. It's not as nice as 11 by 11, but I'd rather do that than have to keep moving the Q-snaps on every stripe. That is Northern Expressions. Let's see if I can find the picture. So then it had to be in a bigger bag because it doesn't fit my regular size bag anymore. So this is what the whole pattern looks like. It is Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions. The called I'm using, um, where's my paper? Shores of Hawk Run Hollow is one over two, one thread over two, one strand over two threads on 40 count. Picture this plus heritage linen. Did I show you anything else yet? Um, and Twisted Band Sampler is 28 count white linen. And I'm using the called for Avera Swa silks. It does have a DMC conversion. She also has a version of this pattern, and um, I got the PDF download off of her website. And she does have a version that is straight cross stitch, no specialty stitches. If you like the pattern and you don't want to do specialty stitches, she has a version that's just all cross stitch. But I just wanted to make it harder, I guess, and chose the one with specialty stitches because I really like the way the specialty stitches look. And I don't mind doing them as long as they're not really, really hard and complicated. They usually have great, great um, directions with pictures showing you step by step how to do each specialty stitch. So it's kind of fun. They're not hard. You just have to think a little harder than doing regular cross stitch where you don't have to think. All right. Uh, I think this is... This is Words to Live By, which hasn't changed since last time I showed it to you. So I'm not going to show you that. I finished the February block. Still working on the, no, I finished the March block. 
still working on that middle section that I'm doing a little bit at a time because it's way bigger, but it hasn't changed. This is Petite House, which may not have changed since I showed it to you last time either. I don't think I worked on it this week. This one's called Petite House by Soda Stitch. They are a designer in Korea. Love their patterns. Love the colors. I got mine off of Amazon.com. They are one of the resellers for them. But you can get them lots of other places too. Um, once I finish... So Shores of Hawkwind Hollow is every day. Twisted Band Sampler is every day just because it's the challenge piece. It used to be the Thursday piece. But now it's gonna, this month it's going to be the challenge piece. Petite House I have just been working on on Sundays. I get usually maybe just an hour or two if I'm lucky in on Sunday evenings. And that's the only time I've been stitching on it. But once I finish Adventure Awaits, which is kind of my focus piece, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll switch over to Petite House. Because Petite House, is, I'm doing that as part of a stitch along with an old chat group that I belong to online. Um, and it's an incentive piece that needs to be done by the end of June. So that one it's not, should be like halfway done by now and it's not. So that needs some more work. Petite House is on, what did I just do with the paper? Good grief. Trying to oh, lose my mind. I probably stuffed it back in here with, I did. <laughs> Twisted band sampler, oh my word. Petite House is on 40 count rainbow linen by Silk Weaver and it is one strand over two threads with the called for colors. Yes, all the called for DMC colors. All right. Seize the day. Can't remember if I was finished with it when I showed it to you last week, if I'd finished with this section. I don't think I had. This is a monthly mystery stitch along, so we don't know what it will look like. We get a partner email every month. You can still join. It's by Caterpillar Cross Stitch, who is in the UK. And I did finish March's section. So the next section won't come out again until the 25th of April. I am doing, and I love that little book, that little hat. I love to read, so that makes me happy. Got the three beach houses in, which matches the needle minder that she that I bought from her that you can get from her seize the day is on 36 count maritime white linen I did use the called for DMC two strands of floss over two threads of fabric and she does have a website caterpillarcrossstitch.com and I did all the color, called for colors. I didn't, it was DMC. I didn't change anything on that one. All right. And words to live by and seize the day are both mystery stitch alongs where you get a part in the email every month. Um, I work on those Monday, that focus slot that I have in my rotation Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I try and get those two caught up as quickly as possible as soon as they come out in my email on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday slot. And then as soon as those two are caught up for the month, then I go back to my regular Monday, Wednesday, Friday piece, which has been Adventure Awaits, which I'll show you in a minute, but it's going to switch to Petite House next week. That means I have a finish coming off close. Not yet, but close. Okay, this is my Christmas stocking for my daughter-in-law, Hannah. Um, it should have been halfway done. Well, yeah, because so I, as I told you in my other video, Andrew found his stocking in his apartment in St. George and news update, he just uh, accepted a job here in the Valley. So he has been in St. George, which is about four hours away from us. They are moving back up here in our area in a couple of weeks. So that's exciting. I'll have all of my kids right here within a half an hour probably of home. So he and his wife will be moving back up. They just got married last July. They got married in July. So this is, and 
So I'm making a, I, I was going to have to replace Andrew's stocking because we couldn't find it anywhere, but he did find it in St. George, thank goodness. So, and then I was going to make a, my daughter-in-law, my son, Michael's wife, Hannah, asked if she could have one to match her husband's. And Andrew's wife, Lauren, asked if she could have one to match her husband's. And I, I didn't, I told them when they got married, don't, you do not have to use these stockings. Um, start a new tradition with your own family, do whatever you want. Please don't feel obligated. But since my two daughter-in-laws asked if they could have one to match their husbands, I said, sure, I'll make you one. So this one's for Hannah. And since I only have to make two this year, this needs to be done by the end of June. So it should be like halfway done by now, by the end of this month. I didn't quite make it. This is about halfway, but I don't have the back stitching done yet. Although I did do all that wallpaper. But I did, this week I was able to finish these. Um, I think these are those bright uh, copper um, molded pans that you bake in, but people hang on the wall. I haven't backstitched it yet, so you can't tell. And I just need to finish the top half of that stove and do some backstitching, and then that top half would be done. But that got some progress this week. It is on... It's two strands of DMC over two threads on Mushroom Lugana even leaf which I believe is 28 count. Because that is the fabric that I did all of my original family stockings on. So they all have to match, so they'll all be the same. And that is in my lovely Christmas bag from Evertote. All right, I got my... So I have been calling this Headache Garden, but I got thinking about that and thinking, that's just a depressing name. I, I would like to call it the healing garden from now on. So don't get confused later when I say my healing garden piece, that's my headache garden piece, but we don't, I mean, every time you say the word headache, it makes you think about having a headache. So we're just gonna call it the healing garden from now on. <laughs> this is a Stitch and Mommy who has a YouTube videos. She does fabulous YouTube videos. Fabulous Stitcher. Also has an Etsy shop. She's a designer. She does temperature gardens. She has three different designs for beautiful temperature gardens. And one of them is a garden of flowers like this. I bought her design, adapted it a little bit so that I could track my migraines to help me and my doctor see trends a little better and to force me to write down the data every day, which, you know, my headache journal, I'm not good about keeping that. So this has worked fabulously. See, it's a healing garden already because I have been great at uh, making myself write down the data every day because I know I'll need it when I get this caught up. And it is mostly caught up. I just didn't stitch the stem or the middle of the flower for this week yet or that bottom border, bottom line. And I did want to put a border around this. And I wanted to put a title at the top so I wouldn't, you know, I need to at least put the year and call it the healing garden at the top. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to stitch some little notes in here because if this is going to be a data record for me, I kind of need to say, you know, uh, recurring sinus infection for the first two months that my ear, nose and throat specialist and I were going back and forth on and, you know, I kind of want to put that this whole month I had a recurring eye infection. Oh my word. The eye doctor and I, I think he finally decided I was allergic to the first antibiotic eye drops I was using. Oh my word. But going back and forth from contacts to glasses to contacts to glasses, that was giving me a headache. Oh. So I'm thinking I might want to put a couple of notes on there what was going on so I can have some more. Because later, next year when I look at it, I am not going to remember any of that. It's in my paper journal, but I'm thinking I might just do some quick backstitching with one thread and put a couple notes on there. Tell me what you think, if that would be strange. I mean, it's going to be a strange piece anyway. It's only going to mean anything to me when I hang it up. When I look back and go, oh yeah, 2019. Look at everything that happened to me in 2019. You know, flying on an airplane, that because I get so motion sick and I take medication, which is great. I can fly, that's not a problem anymore. You know, I'm not throwing up on the plane anything, but motion sickness causes a headache immediately. That's almost a trigger for, if you have migraines and you also have motion sickness, that's a trigger every time. 
So I usually it takes me a day, which is another reason why I'm spending several extra days in Cincinnati this summer, because it takes me a day to recover from flying on a plane. But I should put that on there. Flew on a plane, you know, so I can, so that doesn't mess up the other trends I'm trying to find. Because there's some known trends I already know. <laughs> it's the trends I don't know about I'm looking for. Like every Monday morning, having to go to work. All right, I did work on Disneyland. I'm trying to get 300 stitches in on Disneyland every week. Usually on Saturdays is when I get around to that. But this last couple of weeks, I don't think I got 300 stitches in and I only got about 100 in, maybe 200. I worked on this yesterday, or was it the day before? Working on Dumbo. He's flying up in the sky. He's almost done. I think another day of 100 stitches and he would be done. Um, I am doing this like a Hade in 10 by 10 blocks, same way that Catherine explained on an earlier video on this channel, how she does a Hade. That's how I stitch as well with a couple of few. We do stitch a little bit differently, but mostly the same when we're doing Hades. And I consider this a Hade. It is full coverage. It just doesn't have quite as many colors. And it's not as big as my other Hade. But I usually do it in 10 by 10 blocks, except for this Dumbo up in the sky. I did do that cross country because it was such a small area. I was just picked a color and did all of that color and then picked another color and did all of that color. And I'm down to the last few. Three stitches of this color, three stitches of that color, three stitches of that color, because there's got to be 50 colors in that elephant. Oh my goodness. So Disneyland is on. It is a pattern that I got off of Etsy by Nenny Design, N-E-N-I Design. And this is what it will look like when it's finished. And it is on 40 count dwarf linen, one thread over two, one strand over two threads of fabric. Someday I'm gonna get that, I'm so sorry. Like I can never say that right. All right. Well, there's nothing left in the basket except for the incentive piece that I didn't start on yet. So that must be everything. I am doing a, oh, I should have brought that up. I showed it to you in the last week's video with Catherine. My birthday is at the end of the month, the last week of the month. So I will be starting Utopia by, um, Jardin Privé, they sell, they, it's on their websites, but it's by Camille Camp, Camille Cotage, Cotage, dash Camp, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, Utopie, U-T-O-P-I-E, I am starting that as a birth, it's really a mania start, but since my birthday's the 28th, I am just cheating and starting it a couple of days early for my birthday, and then it will continue to be on my mania list. It will just be a little bit of a cheat. But there will be, the first 19 days in May, it will be also be one of my mania starts. It will just be a whip instead of a new start, which I do a, a combination of whips and new starts. If you would like to join me, if you happen to have Utopie, Diana Zaslow has it, she told me, and she's interested in stitching it with me. So if there's anyone else out there who would like to stitch it with us, I'm starting it on the 28th. I will stitch on it again for a couple days in May. I do a, a new start or work on a different whip the first 19 days of May, and I will do a Mania video later this month telling you all about that. And then I do, I start over again on the 20th of May and do them a day on every one of them again. So it's like I repeat the rotation again. And that gets me into the first week of June. So I will work on it for a couple of days in May. And then I'll be working, it'll be in my rotation somewhere after that because I love that piece. It's the big tree with the little itty bitty houses in the tree. And I have already ordered a needle binder to go with it from, oh, Dang it, what is the name of her shop? She's on Etsy and she sells lots of needle minders, but she had some really cute little fairy doors, elf doors, 
little doors. I ordered some of those for a needle minder to be on that piece. And then I also ordered a scissor fob <laughs> for May that has a little, I think it has a little door on it too. I'm trying to remember which one I ordered. Can't remember. Oh, maybe I got the garden one that had the little snail on it. I can't remember. Anyway, so if you're interested in doing that stitch along, we'll probably call it on Instagram, it'll what, be hashtag Utopi S-A-L. Utopi Stitch Along. Maybe we'll put the year 2019. So Utopi S-A-L 2019, if you're interested in doing that stitch along with us. All right. I don't have any haul. I actually have not left the house this week at all, period, until today. I have to go run some errands. I actually had to put shoes and socks on today because I have to clip the bathrooms cleaned and I have to go run some errands. I usually run around the house in socks or bare feet if it's summer, but I had to put real shoes on today. So I haven't, I didn't get anything in the mail this week and I didn't go buy anything. I was going to go buy some floss today, but I realized my coupon for Michael's for 25% off isn't for a couple of weeks. So I think I'll wait. I just have some DMC I need to buy to kit up the last little bit of my mania pieces. And then I think I have everything. I need to go through them more carefully and see if, if I need to cut the fabric or, you know, the last little things that you do so that I can get as much stitching as possible the day I start it instead of spending the whole time going, which way was this fabric going to go? Or gosh, it's huge. I don't want to have that. I need to cut it the size it needs to be so I don't have all this extra fabric in my way. Anyway, I was hoping to get all of that done before May actually starts. All right, old, old finish. I actually have two old, old finishes today and I'll explain that in a minute. But my first one is gonna need something behind it. We'll do this. It's called Lazy. Lazy Afternoon by Lenart, which is a leisure arts brand. Here she is reading her book. When I very first saw this pattern, I think I stitched this back in 2009, 2004. But as soon as I saw it, I just thought, oh, because I love to read. I would love to be outside. Isn't that gorgeous? In my quiet place, just reading. And the colors are beautiful, those pinks and peaches, those flowers, that wisteria at the top. Oh, gorgeous. Love her. Need to get her framed so that I can enjoy her. So that's an old, old finish. And then if you are um, LDS, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we have general conference this weekend. And so in honor, it's kind of like a holiday. All my kids come home, it's like Christmas. They all wanna be here to watch it because we used to do fun things while we watched it with bingo boards and candy. And we usually have a special breakfast Saturday or Sunday. It's, it's two sessions on Saturday, two hours each, and then two sessions on Sunday, two hours each. So, and then a session uh, Saturday night. Anyway, I figured I would show this piece. This is called The Name of God by My Big Toe. I did it with Gloriana Schoolhouse Red and Gloriana Antique Gold are the two colors that I used. Love this piece. I actually got it framed. Aren't you proud of me? It has all the different names of God from the scriptures, all of his titles, and I love it. <clears throat> Catherine did help me with the border on this because this is, was another one of those intense, complicated borders that was very repetitive, and so she actually took it home one year for it, like she does for my birthday and Mother's Day, and finished. I had part of the border done, and part of the words up here done. And she took it home and finished the border all the way around, if I recall correctly, Catherine. And then I just got to finish filling in the words. I love it when I, I should do that all the time. Do the border first, 
and then fill it in because I love that. I don't know why that makes me happy. But that's, so two old, old finishes today, which brings up something I wanted to talk about. If you are LDS and you stitch during general conference, I do with my little notebook to take notes and I'm trying to stitch and take notes and then I've usually got grandkids at some point running around so it's a little bit crazy. Not as much stitching as I could get done if I was home alone. <laughs> Not trying to listen at the same time but I do stitch during general conference. I love that. If you stitch during general conference and we're going to do um, a little stitch along, Colette, the highway stitcher, if you haven't watched her YouTube videos, you need to go check her out, the Highway Stitcher. She and I decided that we were going to do a little stitch along and uh, blitz stitch as well. I know we'll be stitching during conference. So if you'd like to participate, we're gonna post on Instagram today. Our before, we picked a project, we'll, we'll post a before picture and then we'll post an after picture at the end of the weekend to see how much progress we made. I'm gonna be working on Petite House that I already showed you. Um, I think we'll use the hashtag. Oh, I was gonna write it down so you could, so I could show it. Let's see if I have a marker here that might show. We'll do LDS Gen for general, Comp for conference, S A L like that on Instagram or Facebook if you want to post your progress or you could just pick a project you want to focus on this weekend and do that I know um, Pam and Steph just keep stitching talked about there's and I wish sorry I have to look up the name she's starting a 24 hour stitch along today I believe it starts at four o'clock today and goes until four o'clock tomorrow and there and she's going to stitch live for 24 hours and has um, challenged everyone to join her. So you could join that as well if you want and stitch for 24 hours. As soon as I heard, it, it sounded really fun and then I was like, oh, I don't do well with sleep deprivation, not at all. So no, I will not be participating in that, <laughs> but that would be fun. All right, what I wish I was stitching on, Brian Blitzstitch showed in his last video, I think, that he wished he was stitching on a Brenda Keys piece. And it reminded me of a Brenda Keys piece that I have in my stash called New England Sampler by Brenda Keys. And, oh, I wish, wish I was stitching on that today. Look at those houses, that big long house that's all different colors, all the little people, the ship. There's a mermaid, a crab, a little bunny. I love that piece. I need to get it in started at some point. Maybe in 2020 mania? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I love that. That's what I wish I was stitching on today. All right. I think that's everything. We will see you next week. I hope. I hope I am back next week giving you a weekly update and have a fabulous stitchy day. Bye-bye.